for seven, and the nominations are finally out for Hollywood's biggest night. So who made the cut for this year's Academy Awards? Entertainment correspondent Maud Garrett has been all over it and joins us now from Los Angeles. Good morning, Maud. Good morning, Hayley. Uh, yeah, look, I tell you what, the Academy Awards is the biggest award of the season and already it's been a usually the pre previous awards like the golden globes and the critics choice awards set the scene and the, the pave the path for what we can expect for the academies but that's not the case this year uh, where the golden globes had a lot of snubs it turns out the academy is definitely prioritizing diversity when it comes to recognition uh, for not only people of color but also women behind the camera uh, but the biggest movie the one making the biggest splash pun definitely intended is the shape of water with 13 nominations for not only the supporting actor and actress, lead actress with Sally Hawkins, uh, Guillermo del Toro with Best Director, and of course the movie The Shape of Water getting the nomination for Best Film. Now the Academy can choose up to 10 films for the Best Film category, and this year there is nine best films up for grabs, including uh, the three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, and they actually have a total of nine nominations. And Dunkirk, which is by Christopher Nolan, it's the war flick, that one has seven nominations. And actually, it's Christopher Nolan's very first director nomination as well. Do you think that the sort of the new look of the Oscars is to do with the movements, Me Too, Time's Up, Oscars So White, do you think this has cha changed the landscape a little bit? Uh, big time. So Oscar So White uh, was a movement that started two years ago and already uh, the Oscar board, which was mainly made up of old white men, are starting to diversify the board in itself, which is really helping with the nominations too. Uh, we've seen Greta Gerwig, who is the director of the gorgeous film Lady Bird, score five nominations. And she's actually the fifth woman ever to receive a Best Director nomination. So if she takes that one out, she'll be the second female ever to claim that award after Bar Bar Barbara Streisand, I believe, nearly 50 years ago. Wow. Uh, also, Jordan Peele is doing amazing things within the black community too. Uh, he's usually known as being a comedian, one half of the duo, Key and Peele. But he's not only written, uh, but directed his debut film, Get Out, which is a horror movie based around racism. Uh, he scored four nominations for that one, and he actually tweeted this morning that he was not really covering up his ugly crying on the phone to Daniel Kaluuya, who is the uh, lead actor for that one, also scoring a nomination. Uh, and then you've got Rachel Morrison, who is the first woman ever to win, uh, or sorry, to be nominated for Best Cinematography. So yeah, huge splash happening with, uh, with diversity. Huge, and there's a notable absence. James Franco has um, been left off the Best Actor nominations and he won the Golden Globe. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yes. Yeah, James Frankly No is happening at the moment because uh, many, multiple women have come forward with their own sexual harassment stories. Um, and I think that the Oscars uh, definitely took note of that. And uh, yeah, he was not nominated for any, even though the film and he picked up, I think, Best Actor previously. Mm. So I think, yeah, they're, they're taking a stand. And also Kevin Spacey, who was written out of all the money in the world, uh, I think the turnaround was 11 days to do the reshoots for that. Christopher Plummer has taken a best uh, nomination for Best Lead Actor. So I think the support uh, behind women, the Me Too and Time's Up movement is definitely showing in the entertainment business. Uh, now, Gary Oldman uh, has been nominated for Best Actor for his portrayal of Winston Churchill, which, funnily enough, we just had on uh, a story before that in 1965 was the day he died. So uh, what is, is this big news, having Gary Oldman um, be nominated for The Darkest Hour? I think uh, it's not news to, to anyone, especially Gary Oldman, even though he's very, very good, I mean, he is an actor, of downplaying this humility, uh, especially, because he's outstanding in this role. I don't know if you've seen uh, the, the overhaul here, but Gary Oldman does not, does not look recognisable as Winston Churchill remotely. Uh, the Darkest Hour, <laughs> I believe, has six nominations in total, so that may be getting a lot of recognition. I just, I, I would love to see what uh, his speech would be like, because he is one of our greats, Gary Oldman. Now, what about your picks? Do you have any favourites out of the nominees? Actually, my particular favourite was a movie called Call Me By Your Name, uh, and it's this beautiful love story between two young men in Italy during the 80s. Uh, and it's lovely to see that this sort of relationship displayed on film is no longer a taboo topic at all. Uh, and it's a movie where as soon as the end credits started rolling, so did the tears down my face. It's such an amazing pick, and it is nominated for Best Film this year.
Thank you so much, Maud Garrett, our entertainment correspondent. Yeah, some uh, great picks there. Great news too for Thank New Zealand.